Okay, good morning. No, so we are still in function notations. No, and I'll be sharing to you on how to form the functions. Okay, so here are some samples. No, now suppose no, you are asked to express the distance d traveled in t hours by a car with a speed of sixty kilometers per hour. No, so what are you going to recall here? No, so first and come up to come up with a solution. So we have to consider what do we need to arrive, no? So we are actually asked to solve for the distance as a function of a time t. Okay, so what are we going to recall here is the formula that involves a constant rate, no? So we have a distance formula, no? So we're in, we know that it is a product of a uniform rate times a time t. Now since the rate is given, now, which is a constant of 60 kilometers per hour. So, just substitute that to the formula. So, there you arrive with what is required. So, D is equal to 60 times T. So, you notice that the variable involved is the distance D. And it is expressed as a function of time T. So, as easy as that. No? So, so, there's nothing to worry. Okay? So, only we have to familiarize. No? Okay, number two, you are asked to solve or to express the surface area is. Now, so it's good that we are given the variable to be used, no? So, do a surface area, we will be using a symbol is and for a uh, surface area of a cube as a function of its volume V. So, ang ato karong is represents the surface area and V represents the volume. So, again, for the solution, then I have the required, so which means S will be expressed as a function of V. The surface area involves six face area. Okay, so for the figure, it is like this. Now, so if you have a cube, so we call this as faces, this one. Na? So it is as a face, face, and a face. Now, so there are actually how many faces? I have here along the lateral area so i have six faces then top and bottom i also have two faces so that's why i have six face area areas no okay so what is the area of a face now the area of a face is so let's consider one face no so being a square no so this is a square the area of this is x times x no so area is equal to x squared so your s is equal to six times the x squared. Now, this is an answer if what we need is the surface area expressed as a function of its edge, no? which is x. We call this as edges or edge. No? Okay? So, this is a face. No? So, this is the edge. Okay? So, the, the problem here is that we arrive with a surface area but not expressed as and it is not expressed as a function of the <coughs> volume. No? Okay, so let's, uh, let us try to find way how to reduce our x in terms of v. v represents the volume. So what is the volume of this figure? Okay, so the volume in a prism no? so is equal to the base area. So what is the area of the base? Multiplied by the height. No? So ang imo karong base okay, has a dimension also of x and x. No? So the area of the base... No? So, multiplied by it. So, if the area of the base is x times x, then I multiply that with it. So, the volume is equal to x cubed. Now, I want to solve for x no? in order to find a substitute for this no? in terms of v. So, this is invol uh, involving v and x. No? So, how do we arrive with x? If that is x cubed, so I can extract the cube root both sides or I can raise both sides to a power of one third. No? So, this is v to power one third and x cube is now raised to power one third in order to arrive with exactly x. So my x now, so what is your x? So x and this is your value. So x is equal to a cube root of v or v raised to power one third. So you can now go back to your s. So your s is equal to 6x squared. And if you replace your x with v to power one third, and then, since it is x squared, so if this is x, 
na no? kon x ng v to power 1 third then raise that to a power 2 and applying the law of exponent so there you have 1 third times 2 so the power of your v now becomes 2 third if you write that in terms of radical so actually this is already an answer but if you write that in terms of radical okay so the radical form will be like this now so s is equal to 6 times the square of the cube root of v okay so that's the second problem so we can have a function out from geometric figures okay so familiarize geometric figures okay now here you are asked to find the area of the rectangulation in the figure as a function of x okay let's have the figure okay it's like this now so this is the rectangle okay that is inscribed in the right triangle okay there you have a dimension so x di is actually a side of your rectangle no so you are asked to find the area of this rectangle okay so actually there is no other formula for the area of the rectangle okay so the required by the way is equal to a a function of x no so for the area Kung may length area ba rectangle? It is just a product of length and width. So, it is a product of x times y. Okay, so, if we have a product of x times y, this is already an answer if what we need is a function or area is expressed as a function of two independent variable x, y. But the problem is, we are only required to have an area to contain purely x as its independent variable. Okay, so nag-una-una mo ning ato ang by ratio and proportion. So, let's consider the figure. Actually, we can express our y, no? Ang atong gusto po haton is to arrive with y also being expressed in terms of x. No? So now, if you observe, there is a similarity of triangle. This one. This triangle, this right triangle, is similar to the given figure which is having a dimension of 10 and 6 as legs of a right triangle no okay so this triangle is similar to kining a triangle when can we say that a triangle is similar to the other so that is if they are formed by the same interior angle okay so we can apply ratio and proportion okay so what sides are we going to form a ratio okay so if this is my first triangle here, okay, this one, on ya akong a ratio with, or I have to apply the similarities, the property of similar triangle here, so suppose I have to form a ratio between y and the base, no? the vertical side of the smaller triangle with a base which is 6 minus x. So, correspondingly, so tanaw sa nimo, corresponding to the vertical side and the bigger triangle is 10, and the base is equal to 6. So, I can have a ratio of y is to 6 minus x, then 10 over 6. But, kine, this can be reduced by 2. No? So, 10 and 6 is a common factor of 2. So, we can also write that as 5 over 3. So, if you have to solve for your y, y is equal to 5 over 3 times the 6 minus x. So, with this, since y is already described in terms of x, so I can go back to my a. And my A is a product of as a product of X and Y. So this is X and this is Y. Okay, so rewriting that as 5 over 3, X times the quantity 6 minus X as your answer. So that is the second uh, third no? example on how to arrive with functions. No? Now in the next, no? so you are asked to give to write. The given function, which is y, a function of x. Actually, the function we have here is a trigonometric function. No? Because previously, we know that functions can be of different types no? or a different kind. Generally, we have the algebraic and we have the transcendental. So this time, this is a kind of a transcendental function. Specifically, this is a trigonometric function. Here, we are asked to express x as a function of y. Okay? The required is to express x as a function of y. So actually, if you have to use a, a function of x, so you can also use other letter to name your function. So this time, I am calling my x being a function of y. Okay? 
So how to arrive with that? So try to recall a function and its inverse function. If you are using tangent, then you can recall the arc tangent. So just take the arc tan both sides. No? Okay, so that one. So take the arc tan of y and the arc tan of the tangent of the 3x plus pi. So in order to have this be exactly 3x plus pi. Okay, and the 3x plus pi this time is just equal to the arc tan of y. So by rewriting this this way, so you are already expressing your x term purely. No? So this is now an x term wherein you can easily remove or separate your pi from the x term. Pi is a constant. No? So that can be arc tan y minus pi. So dividing with 3 to come up exactly with x, so we have the arc tan y minus pi. Okay, so over 3. And this is now your answer. You are now defining or expressing your x in terms of y. Okay? So, when you are given a function, so you have to think of inverse functions. No? Now, you can pair logarithmic with exponential, trigonometric with inverse trigonometric functions. Okay? So, that's the technique. Okay? And we have the next. No? If you are given a situation where there is again another geometric figure. So try to recall some common geometric figures. A triangle again is mentioned here. And the kind of triangle is an equilateral triangle with sides equal to x. Okay? So since the figure is not given, so you have to think, no? what is an equilateral triangle? What would be its property? So try to describe what is an equilateral triangle? Equilateral triangles are triangles having the same measure of sides. And if a triangle is equilateral, triangle is also equiangular. Now, what would be the sum of interior angle in a triangle? The sum of which is equal to 180 degrees. So, if that is equiangular, so or it has the same measure of its interior angle, so you divide the 180 by 3. So, its interior angle will actually be having a measure of 60 degrees. Now, since it is the area of the triangle that is needed, so the area of the triangle can easily be recalled. Actually, do not mga formula which is a modification of this. No? So, the formula for the area of the triangle wherein difficult for us to forget maybe is what's the area of the triangle? Area of the triangle is just one half a base. What's the base in our figure? X and its altitude is X. Or its height is equal to X. No? So, it's one half base times X. But, as to the required, the area of the triangle must be a function of X. By the way, if there is no variable that is given to be used in your problem, then you are free to use other letters. Okay? So you can maybe represent area with a different letter, but usually when you will be using a letter, it should be close to the term. No? So if that's an area, so I may use the A. Okay? So <coughs> it is a function of Okay, it's indicated that so it's a function of x. So if you're using other letters, so okay, so you can express that as a function of the uh, variable you are using. But on this case, yeah, it is already indicated that area will be a and the side of the triangle will be x. So don't look for another variable instead of them. Okay, so area is a function here or as the formula is one half of b times x. Now, referring to the figure, my area can be one half of x times x. So again, you can see a problem here because your a is not purely containing x, but it is containing also another variable x. So how do we express x in terms of x? Okay, so that's also another functional notation. X expressed as a function of x. So I'll be looking on the figure. Now there are many ways. No? Now I'm able to drop a perpendicular bisector here where I have to form a right triangle. Since I'm dividing, so this is also an angle bisector, so 
I am dividing 60 also into two parts. So this is 30. So because this is 60, so this can be 30. So the same with the other side. Now, so this is the uh, a line of symmetry also. Okay? Now, if this is a right triangle, then I can apply right trigonometry. Or I can also use Pythagorean theorem. Can be, no? So if this is x, so I am dividing my base equally into 2. So this can be x over 2. But I'm not reflecting that on the figure because I have other way to describe my h in terms of x. Now, being a right triangle and applying my right trigonometry using a trigo functions, no? so I mention that we can use Pythagorean theorem on this right triangle. Diba? This is the hypotenuse. This is the so many say leg. And that's the other leg. So you can apply Pythagorean theorem if you like. But it would be simpler if I have to use right trigonometry by using a function which will involve the given angle. So if my angle or a non-angle of pila, 60 degrees. Okay? So if I have an angle of 60 degrees, the adjacent side of 60 degrees is equal to x over 2. And the opposite side is equal to z. It's and the hypotenuse is equal to x. Okay, so I am referring to the triangle that is found at the left. No? Now, if I'll be using the base of x over 2, then it is somewhat complicated. No? So I'm not going to use that one. Instead, I'll be using a ratio upside wherein it will not involve fraction in order that my computation will be easier. No? So I'll be using maybe the opposite and the hypotenuse side. The opposite side of the angle 60 degrees and by recalling our trigo function, opposite over hypotenuse is actually what trigo function of the angle 60 degrees. It is actually a sine function. Okay, so... The sine of 60 degrees is opposite h over x. So if I have to get what is h, so it is a product of x and the sine of 60 degrees. Now it's good because the angle involved is a special angle. And when it is a special angle, you can arrive with a value of the sine of that special angle, so which is also an exact value. Okay? So you can maybe go with a triangle involving 60 and 30 degrees to come up with the value of the trigonometric function of sine of 60. But you can also go with your calculator to have that as the value. Now, I'm going to consider again my area formula. If my area is one half of x times h, then I can now replace my h with what is evaluated here. h is equal to x sine 60. Now, using your calculator, or maybe we can recall the value of the sine of 60 degrees. No? So we can have a value of the square root of 3 over 2. So simplifying this, so we have 2 times 2. That's why we have 4 in the denominator. And we have square root of 3. And x times x will give you an x squared. Actually, this is a formula for area of an equilateral triangle that if either this formula is difficult for us to recall, so this is actually a derivation of the formula for the area in equilateral triangle expressed as a function of its side. Now, so this is the fifth and the last example on how to arrive with functions from conditions. No? Okay, so thank you for watching and until the next video. Okay, so bye-bye.